it is completely possible to love a body whilst also knowing you need to change it. Hey folks, it's Finn. Welcome back folks, lovely to see you. So today's video is a bit of a follow up to a video I did a few weeks ago called Born in the Wrong Body. And in that video, I talked about why I no longer use that term, born in the wrong body, to describe my trans experience. And I talked about my reasons for that, one of which being that I feel the term born in the wrong body can be quite unhelpful and even harmful because it kind of separates us from our body and sets up a sort of dynamic where we're in a hate relationship with our body, which I don't think is very helpful. I had some amazing comments on that video, but there was one particular comment that I really wanted to pick up on, which is what this video is about today. And that is the valid comment that if transgender people are saying that they love their body and not using the term born in the wrong body, then perhaps some anti-trans people <laughs> or people that don't understand trans lives might think that if a trans person can learn to love their body, if they don't hate their body, then they don't need to transition. So in today's video, I really want to talk about this. I want to dive deep into this topic and talk about why it is possible to both love a body, but still want and need to change it. And talk about some of the ways that we can begin to love a body even when it isn't quite right for us. But before we get stuck in, for anyone who is new, my name is Finn, and here on this channel, I share my life in recovery as a transgender gay man. So here you will find loads of videos on first-hand accounts and practical advice on gender transition, recovery, mental health, and personal development. So if you've been hanging around for a while and you haven't yet subscribed, I'd love it if you would. It helps my channel more than you know, plus, you'll also be kept up to date with all of the regular installments. So let's think about this topic on how to love a trans body. Now, for many of us trans people, being transgender means having a body that causes a lot of pain. Gender dysphoria is incredibly hard to deal with and it's really difficult to spend every single waking day in a body that doesn't reflect the gender that you are. But I really do believe, because I've learned this through my own journey, that you can love a body and also know that it doesn't accurately reflect you and needs to change. And you can hold these two distinct feelings in the same space without one cancelling out the other. To explain. To help explain this, let's look at it through a different lens. Forget the trans lens for a minute and let's look at it another way. So using my own story as an example, I have both physical and mental health challenges. I have hypothyroidism and underactive thyroid. I also have some mental health challenges, predominantly a fluctuating mood and high anxiety. Now with my hypothyroidism, my body often fails me. It doesn't produce the right amount of hormones to keep me well. So often I get huge periods of being really, really fatigued and feeling really, really unwell. I don't like having hypothyroidism at all. It is really frustrating and difficult to deal with, but I don't hate my body because of it, because I don't see the point in making my situation worse by having hypothyroidism and hating my body for having hypothyroidism. But deciding to not hate my body because of it doesn't mean that I then accept the fact that I've got hyperthyroidism and do nothing about it. I still am looking at ways to stay well. Make sense? And this is exactly the same for my mental health challenges. I have a mind that for some reason just produces much more anxiety. I have a mind that produces much more fluctuating mood. I have huge periods of high anxiety and huge periods when my mood is really low. I never really know how I'm gonna feel on any particular day because this is a fluctuating condition. But I don't hate my mind either, because again, hating my mind won't help to solve any problems. But at the same time, just like my hypothyroidism, it doesn't mean because I don't hate my mind that I'm not seeking to change the things that happen for me. So with both these challenges, my mental health and my physical health, 
I choose to practice compassion about myself. I love my mind and I love my body, despite them often not working in a way that suits me best. But because I love my mind doesn't mean that I stop seeking solutions. I'm forever going to the doctor and having my levels checked for my hypothyroidism and adjusting my medication to stay well. I'm forever seeking counseling, support to help my mental health improve. I love my body and mind, but I still work very, very hard to correct the things about my body and mind that don't work for me. I can love them, but find them frustrating at the same time. Does that make sense? Wanting to recover from physical and mental health challenges so that you can feel more well and peaceful doesn't require you to first hate your body and mind. And wanting to transition your body so that it more accurately reflects the gender you know yourself to be does not require you to have to hate your body. So loving our body does not mean we're completely fine and happy with the ways that it doesn't work for us, but rather that we're choosing wisely to love our body regardless of these things so that we can change them in a more compassionate way that serves ourselves in a much more nourishing space than it does to hate these aspects of ourselves. But Finn, I hear you ask, how on earth can you love a body that you feel at war with? And I agree, I absolutely want to acknowledge that it is so incredibly challenging to learn to love a body that isn't working in the way that best serves us, whether that's mental health or physical health, whether it's a body that doesn't accurately represent who we are, that is really challenging. But actually, when we learn to develop compassion towards that body, that actually helps us to change it. Because it's only by having real compassion about ourselves that we can move into a space where we know what to do and we can take care of ourselves whilst we're doing something about it. The way that I have found really helpful to learn how to love my own body, even through my transition, when it wasn't accurately representing the truth of who I am, was to learn to develop gratitude to my body. And this is hard to do at first, but bear with me, because let's think about this for a minute. We have these incredible bodies that allow us to have this human experience in the first place. Not only that, this human body of ours is incredibly adaptive. It is amazing how, for example, relating this to the transgender experience, we can take hormones and our bodies adapt. That regardless of having female hormones the entire first half of my life, I start to have testosterone and I go through a second puberty. How amazing is it that my body can do that for me, that it can adapt to those hormones and change? How incredible that our bodies are so resilient that we can have surgery and our bodies will heal. We can have this really invasive, hardcore surgery that takes ages to go through and yet our bodies adapt and they heal. Scars fade, bodies adapt and change. How amazing is it that I've been able to use parts of my body, my skin from my forearm, to create my penis. My body has made sacrifices in order to help me have the body that properly ref reflects who I am. That is an incredible thing to be grateful for. I love my body so much for its incredible ability to do this, to adapt, to change, to heal, to have parts moved around so that they're more accurately representing me. There is a lot to be grateful for. So to sum up, being able to love our body does not mean we're not trans and it doesn't mean we don't need to transition. What it means is that we've learned the ability to hold these two different emotions in the same space. That we can hold the emotion on the one hand of real love and respect for our body, for all of its amazing abilities and opportunities it gives us, was at the same time being very sad at its limitations and flaws and still wanting to change it. Those can be held in the same space. And when we do so, we're much more compassionate towards ourselves, which ultimately leads to a much healthier and much easier transition. I really do hope that was helpful. It isn't an easy process, I know, but I really do firmly believe that anyone can cultivate a more loving, compassionate, 
view of themselves and their body, no matter where you are in transition. If you have any comments or questions you want to get in touch with me, please do leave a message in the section below. I'll also leave a link to my website. Take care of yourselves, folks. Be gentle with yourselves. Keep on keeping on, and I'll see you next week.